why Bob's lawyer addresses Namde Kano's death remorse. Welcome to the news and thank you for sitting in to listen. Barristi Fanya Jofo, the lead counsel of Namde Kano, leader of outlawed indigenous people of Biafra Ipob on Monday evening, alert fears of his clients who are being said he is very much alive. So in the media space, there has been a lot of speculations concerning Namde Kano, you know, they have not been able to see him and, you know, some people are making, they're making it seem or they are genuinely maybe f frightened or frightened that, you know, something might have happened to him. And the lawyer, his lawyer, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra's lawyer, is actually coming out to say, no, he's fine and he's well. The news in detail, please, stay with us. In a statement to Sun, which was made available to Politics Nigeria, a GO4 said, Kano is still being detained in the facility of the Department of State Services, DSS National Headquarters in Abuja. He ever said that there was an impasse as regards the meeting with IPOB leader on Monday. A GO4's full statement reads, Update on a routine visit to our Indefactible client Mazi Innam de Kano at the headquarters of the Department of State Services DSS Abuja today, the 28th day of February 2022. Our routine court ordered visit to our indefactible client was led by the distinguishing advocate of Nigeria, Prof. Chief Mike Ozekome San, who is also the lead counsel in Onion Domade Innam de Kano's case. Our esteemed team of lawyers comprising of Elaine Silk, myself and Barrister Aloy Ijimako, we all cleared most promptly upon our arrival and consequently allowed to proceed with the business of a day to pay Namde Kanu a visit as his lawyers. We were immediately ushered into a room designated for the visit. All the protocols we had duly observed as we willingly submitted ourselves to same, aligned with the DSS stipulated our routine guidelines. We waited until many turned into hour and there was no signal that you would have onion to brought to us. Consequently, the erudite silk leading our team raised alarm and demanded to have the attention of the DSS superiors for explanation on one a court ordered VC to which ordinary should not extend between beyond two hours were taking almost one and a half hour waiting time with no hope of meeting with onion. Following the start process of the Orida Silk, we were consequently brought in to meet with some superior officers at a meeting where all superior personnel connected with the matter were invited. Far-reaching contests were made to establish the fact that our client, Onion Domazi Namdekan, was presumably protesting the previous three visits which were aborted by the DSS. All efforts made to move the visit to its very location of detention were not granted by the DSS, as they insisted that our request ran contrary to the procedure and guidelines. Effort is presently being intensified to pacify Onyeng to, to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with his legal team to enable us brief him on legal steps we may be compelled to take and measures to be adopted to assure him that there are legal consequences for flagrant violations of court orders by the DSS. We are quite hopeful that this needless in se will be resolved between now and tomorrow morning to enable the legal team led by Chief Ozekome San to conduct the visit tomorrow that has so far been assured us. We can authoritatively confirm to you all that at this stage that Onyen Domazin Namde Kanu is very much alive and still being detained in the facility of the State Security Services DSS National Headquarters, Abuja. We shall continue to keep you updated on the matters connected with this visit to our indefactible client Onyen Domazin Namde Kanu and any other compelling attendance concerning their two. Thank you all, Umuchineke, and remain richly blessed. So, um, there was a news flying around the air, you know, that um, he was no longer in the DSS um, custody. He has been moved to another location, and that is why his... Um, the lawyers are not able to see him whenever they come to visit. I think it has happened. They said, according to that particular article that is flying all around, they said it has happened, I think, two to three times consecutively. You know, you know, the person was like, I don't know if it's kind of genuinely 
um, show of concern or the person is just trying to get people heated up and you know now um, his supporters will come and you know be saying things like that so sincerely I don't know this is exactly my dream last night when people were saying that he is dead I told them that he is alive but if I should go by my other dreams I would say that Mazen Namde Kano will come out before April 8 because I've seen him coming <laughs> Oh my goodness, somebody is savage. Somebody is so savage. Some people can be so savage. You better go back to bed and sleep for more dreams to come because he cannot be released until after 2023. 20, 20, 20, Tenable will decide his fate. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, I think um, the thing here is, like I said, the news that's flying all around are to do two things. One, it is either it is a genuine concern from, you know, some members of his group, or it is actually a ploy to get his people agitated, heated up, and make them, you know, now, these people, they're always doing in the busky, you know, they're speaking in an in the busky way, like, who you, who, who be, who you, that is how they speak. So, you know now, whatever anything concerning that particular man is brought up and you're saying anything negative against him, oh my goodness, they are ready to launch an attack. So it is said that the person is trying to get them agitated for no reason or the person is just showing concern. Any of the two. But at the end of the day, we hope justice is served. No matter what people are saying, that ah in Nigeria here oh and even somebody is saying this is still 2023 we don't hope it gets that far sincerely himself and Sunday Ibuhu both of these men do not deserve to be in where they are today we have a lot of people who have committed unspeakable crimes like unprintable crimes crimes that if you hear it your shock absorber will just uh -uh. one of them is already in the custody of the NDLEA now such people, if they are, you know, genuinely put in prison uh, or genuinely, you know, convicted, no problem. I don't think we have problems in this country. But it is because in Nigeria here, you see where crimes are being celebrated because the person who committed it is actually a celebrity. And you see where um, crimes are being, uh, how am I going to put it now? The law is very strict on the particular person of a society because... That person is actually one of our masses or, let me say, a, no, a nobody. Somebody who does not have anyone. He does not have money to chase lawyers or to give to lawyers. And he does not have anybody in the powerhouse as well. Okay, on this note, we've come to the end of the news. to say thank you for tuning in to listen. Until I come your way next time, enjoy the rest of the day.